Hello, and welcome back to Everything You Need to Reduce the Sugar in Your Diet. Once again, I'm your host, I'm Stacey Portugal, and I'm a board-certified life and weight loss coach. In the first presentation, I presented some not-so-good facts about the dangers of excess sugar in your diet in order to educate you on a deeper emotional level so that you can eliminate the disconnect between what you want and what you're actually doing. This is what I called in video one as a meeting of the mind. Then in video two, we talked about the three macros, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and how they work in your body. You might be asking yourself, well, why does this matter? I mean, how will understanding my macros help me to reduce the sugar in my diet? Here's where I'll need you to trust me and my 11 years of helping people lose weight. I put these videos in an order that's just right so that this presentation will maximize your potential for success. Our action step in the last video was to begin to notice the processed and sugary foods in your kitchen. So did you look in the pantry? Was it stuffed with sweets or chips? Or is it clean and organized? What sort of foods do you see in your pantry? What foods in your house are causing you trouble? The ones that you just need to eat a small amount, but before you know it, you stuffed yourself and you just feel disgusted. Today, we're talking about what you can do right now to reduce the sugar in your diet. And this is really all about being a smarter consumer. The food industry has us duped. Sugar and high carb foods are everywhere and they're driving our cravings for unhealthy foods that are really just putting us at greater risk for disease and premature aging. So you need to start reducing the sugar in your diet first by starting at home. For most of us, this is where the most important environment is that we need to manage. Basically, wherever you're making the majority of your food decisions is where you'll need to your focus your attention. And for most of us, this is our kitchen. But please keep in mind that the guidelines I'm about to share with you can apply to your car, your office, or anywhere that uh, you tend to eat. So let's begin. Let's first discuss what exactly in your kitchen is driving your cravings, and then we'll discuss how to manage these foods. So you may have, from the last video, identified certain foods that have taken control of you. But let's look more closely at why and the simple steps that will stop the cycle of eating. You know, sugar is hidden in most every processed food that you eat. Now, what do I mean by processed? A processed food is a food that's been altered and is no longer in its original state, as nature intended. So how do you know if the food you're buying is processed? Well, the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, is this food found in nature? Does it have a nutrition label? For example, foods like bananas, meats, um, potatoes, they typically don't. These are foods that should dominate your kitchen, those that don't require labels because you see exactly what it is. You know it because it belongs in nature. But there's more. A wider net of healthy foods that do have a nutrition label that are can be appropriate to help you reduce the sugar in your diet. And I'm going to share these foods next time when you'll be receiving a list of foods that reduce cravings. So be on the lookout for the next video. So as a guideline, first notice if it's a food found in nature and then check the nutrition label and the ingredients list. This ingredients list is a wealth of information, and as a guideline, there should be no more than about two to three ingredients total. Now, let's dig a little deeper. As you might be examining some of the foods in your house right now, what you'll need to decide is if you're keeping or tossing these foods. 
Our goal is to get rid of those foods that trigger us. And this might be pretty obvious, like we talked about in the last video, you know, like the cookies and the chips, but there may be more foods that contain hidden sugars and they can indeed drive your cravings just as much as the obvious offenders. Here's what to look for in things like yogurt, condiments, salad dressing, and then of course the more obvious stuff like cookies, crackers, chips, ice cream. Sugar goes by many names, and here are just a few of the names that you'll need to recognize. Dextrose, fructose, galactose, sugar, honey, agave, high fructose corn syrup or any syrup, including maple syrup or brown rice syrup, lactose, maltose, sucrose, and there's more. You might notice that many of these end in O-S-E, like sucrose, lactose, which O-S-E is the biochemistry name for and sugar. So in order to fully protect your health and gain control so you can rid yourself of this unwanted weight, you'll need to examine the list of ingredients. And also use the guideline that if this food has more than a few ingredients, chances are it's highly processed and it really doesn't deserve a place in your kitchen. Also, if there is sugar or any ingredients that you can't pronounce or you don't stock them in your own kitchen, never seen them in mom's kitchen or grandma's kitchen, then toss that food. The sugars and other chemicals in these foods can be detrimental to your health. Your kitchen or any place that you eat your meals needs to be a sanctuary. You should be treating it like a marble floor. You're paying attention and you're caring for it because it has great value to you. You keep it clean and pristine. It's the cornerstone of your ability to reduce the sugar in your diet. Keeping junk food in the house forces you to say no and no to the food again and again until the food's gone. Speaking of which, let's talk about where your food decisions originate. And for most of us, that's going to be at the grocery store. Being a smarter consumer starts there. And marketing influences our decision to purchase. And ultimately, it, it influences what we eat. You may have noticed food labels like gluten-free, high in omega-3s, uh, fortified, Labels like this are meant as the last word to convince you to buy their products. It's really more of an advertisement. It makes you feel like this food is solving a problem, but all it really does is it creates more confusion amongst consumers. And the companies are simply leveraging their knowledge of psychology in order to make sales. Labels are only loosely regulated by the FDA, and while they might be truthful, they are often misleading. These labels are a tiny piece of a health puzzle, and they're oversimplified, and honestly, they're not going to help you with the bigger, more complex problem of reducing sugar. So be aware of these labels and don't rely on them solely to make your food decisions. Instead, use the guidelines that we discussed. Number one, remove any food, even if it seems healthy, that triggers you to eat more than you had intended. Number two, check the ingredient label and look for hidden sugars. Try to stick to ingredient lists that have no more than two to three ingredients. And if you can't pronounce it, then toss it. On another note, don't be afraid to throw out foods that are keeping you sick or stuck. It's way cheaper to throw food out than it is to incur the high costs associated with illness or obesity. Now, you might be thinking, well, I need some junk food in the house because, you know, the kids, the grandkids, the spouse, they eat it. And so here are a few practical tips to help you with that. Number one is out of sight, out of mind. So move the food to another shelf or somewhere where it's not in your line of vision. Number two, if there's a food of theirs that triggers you, then unless your loved one is really going to miss it, 
try to eliminate it. Also, another good stat is that studies show that if we are faced with too much variety, like you have a stuffed pantry or maybe you eat from like a breakfast buffet, we tend to overeat. So the idea is to purchase to, um, less so you can eat less and get to go. And the truth is it's healthy for everyone to think this way. So this should apply to the foods that you're buying for your family, everyone. The point is to clean out and organize your kitchen. So now that you have a better idea of the foundational steps to reduce the sugar in your diet, you'll need strategies to manage cravings so you'll be able to conquer, conquer tempting moments that would typically derail your efforts. You may also have questions about things like artificial sweeteners and how to order a healthy, low-sugar meal, maybe in a restaurant, or maybe there's a fast food place that you really like to or need to go. Or maybe you're just wondering what to eat for breakfast. So in order to address all these questions and help you specifically, here's what we'll be discussing in the next video, which is going to be a 20-minute webinar. First off, are artificial sweeteners good for you? Do they help you with weight loss? We'll also discuss how to handle your most challenging situations. Could be anything from emotional eating to lifestyle choices to weight loss uh, and, and menopause, anything. Plus, I have a gift for you. Foods that cut the cravings. So you can head to the grocery store right after the short webinar and get started on reaching your goals. Plus, there's a bonus and it's a surprise. So if you want to end the vicious cycle of dieting, register for the 20-minute webinar so you'll know how to prepare meals that reduce cravings and you're going to walk away with strategies that work. All right, guys, I so hope this was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video, the 20-minute webinar. Just click the link below. Bye.